Okay, now we're going to begin the practice in a little bit of a unique supported bridge posture. So as we kind of settle into the, um, the subtleties of this pose, it, in the beginning it feels rather maybe intensified. So let's just work our way into supported bridge. So we start with a couple blankets at the back. Two is nice, you will likely shed one of them, but let's start with uh, some generous support for our brain. Just let yourself sit on a bolster. Take a block. You can do a couple ways of getting into this bridge pose. You can place your block so it aims away from the bolster lengthwise flat. Okay? So I'm going to place the block right in the bolster, kind of right, right where my uh, right forward of my pelvic floor. Okay, and that's going to be where I lay my tailbone on the block. Got that? So it's very narrow. It's like you're kind of teetering on the, the edge of a, well, the edge of a grip. Okay? Feel if you can actually lift up your ribs in that position. If you're capable of that kind of ascension of the heart. And then take a belt and buckle up at the top of your thighs. Make sure the area of the buckle that you could release is on a side of the leg. So it's a little easier to detach yourself. If detachment could be this easy, I'd sign up for this one. Okay? So I have my thighs rather um, grippy, right? But it's not so grippy in my hip, hippy that my knees can't splay a little bit. Okay. So I got my sand nearby. I'm going to go ahead and just put it on my lap. Before your tailbone cannot tolerate this anymore, you're going to lower back. And the key I find is to hold my block right under my tush. Okay, feel the length between the back of the pelvis. And then as I lower back, I'm actually going to work on the sand being on the top of my thighs. And I start with a micro bend of the knees. And as I lower back my head to the blanket, right, I feel better with one blanket under my head. You might like two. And then experience this kind of exposure radiance through the front of the body. And maybe the legs can separate. I would let them go farther out than you thought you were going to start with. And feel the intensity of the bell and the stand. So as you basically ascend the frontal hip bones, we're going to bring the beginning meditation through the passage of this pose, through the opening of the front. And at any time, if it feels a little harsh in your lower back, I want you to work really wide with the chest and feel the ribs expanding with the experience of breath and time. Okay, so fuss around until, yes, you have this lift of the core and explore what movement of extremities, which is legs, arms, and the limbic brain, maybe moving it side to side. So you feel the attention into the heart and the lungs. Let your eyes perhaps settle. Keep in mind, you can always take off the sand and move the belt, stay with the same pose, basic essence. And you can always bend your knees. There's no requirement of shape, but there is an essential requirement of aligning your focus internally towards the breath. And notice if you feel any attachment to particulars of this pose, of the waves of your breath. And as you gather your attention, really with all of us that are in this practice, setting an intention is helpful, 
right now. So feeling if there's something in you or mentally about you that you would like to center and settle and release, this is the time. And if it's beyond the physical, So feeling the current of inhale, which is rather grippy and kind of sticky, right? When you breathe in, it has a tightness to it in the web of the face sometimes and the nose. And then as you exhale, let the breath sweep out of the lungs. Those of you that feel comfortable moving the legs a little closer or as close as they can be, feeling how the lift of the ribs, that ascension supports the elongation of the spinal column. So I try to feel where my upper body, which is rather tough, right? Feels a little tight because it draws forward often. I can start to loosen the threads of the upper body and feel where the chest opens. Take a few more breaths, just a few more. See if you can stay with the energy of ascending the ribs, the frontal hip bones, and recognizing kind of the impermanence of it all, huh? Even the pose, even the, the moments that come and go that you like, that you dislike, Refresh it with your breath. And now send the arms straight back overhead so they have reach. So you're in as long of a shape as you could imagine on the floor. How much longer you can get. You're lifted by the props. And now as we bring our arms open, and we don't need to get choppy in our sequencing, so, so let things have some fluidity, especially between the bones relationship with movement. So as I start to slide my feet in, I feel that that's a structural release in my lower back. It sure is going to be when I get to side stage. Okay, so slide your sand. Um, buckle if there's any in between shape that you want to take because you can. Yeah, you might bring your knees out in Bhattakasana. You might stomp your feet for a few moments rather calmly, right? And feel the kinetic energy in your lower back. And then as we roll left, roll off the block. Nice. We're going to roll complete to the left side. And tuck in your blanket if you moved it from behind you. And try to take your shape right into the side stage with either a ball on the inside of the right leg or a block. And then as you move your sand across the side, feel where you can comfort the actual place that you were working deeply into, which is the low back and the ribs, right? Those spaces were kind of a little clunky in that last pose to try to formulate. So you might have the sand higher than you have before in side stage to release the any pattern in the back that's tightening, okay? Especially if you tend to have any spasms in the back. So my left arm is between the props, the bolster and the blankets. My right arm stretches over. You could put a block under your hand overhead. If it feels like it's farther down than a block would be, then you might span your right arm open and play a bit with how are your ribs circulating into this bolster. So my understanding of this position is that I ought to be able to feel the arm extend, so straighten out, right? And if it doesn't feel that connected there, you might be placing your ribs on the bolster 
too high up. Maybe you need your bolster to lower. So you can always change it up, but you could get up and shift your bolster, even if it's a half an inch closer into your hip. Sometimes that makes a difference. Okay, so I can feel a little bit more of that lower back range. And now your sand might move to your hip. You can get a cycle of kind of seasoning your pose and then allowing the eyes to relax and get a few moments of kind of feel the deal here, kind of feel the pose pattern, stretching with your breath. Let the breath be a stretching tool. So keep in mind, a block could be under your hand overhead. You can have your arm behind your back just as well. Let the weight of that right leg kind of smoosh the ball if you have a ball or a block. And if you don't want to use that arm, you're going to have to push the leg farther back or closer to the left leg. Search for the few moments here of expansion dependent on breath. That's a thought. Expansion dependent on breath. Some of these thoughts and the shapes come when you're in the shape, not when you're thinking about the shape. So your body determines its spaciousness, but it takes time in the pose to awaken that feeling. The movement meditation. And now with that right arm over or behind you, want to have us meet in a position where our right arm is next to the left, so they're close. Now see if you can be where in this position with the hands touching. Now the, the left arm is longer than the right because of the position with the props, right? So I'm going to try to interlace my fingers and stretch my right arm along a little farther. Now you could hold the right wrist with your left hand as well. Now they're both kind of interesting. To stretch my fingers is very interesting with my hands in a way to hold that right hand. And then let it go. And then feel when we move into tabletop pose. So the sand can shift off. My body rotates completely to all four, so I'm in a table pose. And if your knees need a little bit of support, tuck in a towel or a blanket under them and calmly motion your toes under and the knees up. And then pedal out through your legs, alternate hinging at the hip and knee, and feel if you swivel your hips a little side to side, if you're wagging your tail, feel if your head lowers down towards the bolster, so towards a full down dog. And then if you're taking full dog pose, see if you can press the inner thighs back and reach the heels to the floor. Let the mind basically relax down below the level of the heart. Now, of course, if this is critically difficult right now for your bone structure, have your knees on the ground and have your hands on a blanket or blankets and lower your forehead to the bolster. Here is a great either in between position when you take a break or for the whole shape. It's important for us all to at least feel that for a few seconds. So, those of us in dog pose, feel the hips reach back, feel the heels lift up, try to really stretch the bottoms of those feet. Okay, and as the hands open, palms make deep imprints. Lower down your forehead to the bolster and your hands forward on the blankets or blanket. Feel the back 
and reach evenly. You might even do some like little quick moves of your sitting bones side to side, kind of swivel your seat and feel movement frequency in your back. Kind of like a squiggly line, right? A, de a detecting movement. Okay, let's keep the movement detectives here. So we're going to go to our stage pose on the other hip, side stage. So I'll place the ball inside my left knee or the block. And as I lean into it, use this right arm. Like we know up dog, right? We have both hands forward and we lift up and spring through the ribs. This is kind of like a it's kind of like a, a low side dog. There's no side dog pose, but low side dog. So I bend my right elbow and I lean into it right after pushing in that side reach. And then we place our stand. Perhaps if you don't want to use stand, we'll use it. And as the block is maybe already overhead, I reach my sensation through the limb with the left rib cage expanding. Now your right rib cage is relaxing and experiencing weight of the body into the ribs, into the muscles between the ribs. And the left side is kind of more of the liberated part of the body. Okay, so notice to be liberated, right? You need some grounding in one part. So try to get grounded. Feel the right side, feel the left lane of travel through the waist, through the arm, and let your brain be nurtured as it doesn't need to do as much thinking right now. Just let it be. Breathe long to the side. Let the sand be where it's relative to your breath. So I don't necessarily feel a lot of breath with my sand low, and sometimes I don't want to feel the sand on my hip. So it could be good for you. It might feel interesting for you to have the sand on your hip. So at that point, you feel a floatiness in the rib cage. I don't know if floatiness is, is an actual description that's relevant to all of us, but um, it's not just an expansion, but it kind of the breath hovers over the rib cage. Feeling, breathing, any little moves that allow you to operate on a sensible level of opening. Few more breaths. And try to get the, the kinks out, so to speak, of your, your back lower waistline as well. So if you want to move a little bit in towards your brain, move your hips perhaps. Now as that left arm overhead is going to link up with the right hand. So I either hold on to my left wrist with my right hand and stretch the left arm further, or I interlace my fingers and I stretch the left arm further out. Yeah. Yeah, simply notice when you relax any of that tug of war with the hands. And then as we start to move, if you have a block overhead, please put it over to the side yard of your bolster. Every object has its own side yard here today. And then as I move my left knee to my right knee, I'm going to kind of hunker down here, roll into my right waist, Actually, the waist, you feel the waist body push down. And then as you come up, 
kind of survey the back of your space besides the screen here. So you'll see, okay, I've got my bolster here. So we're going to be simple. We're going to sit on it and we're going to push a blanket away. Probably the right side of your mat is a good idea. And the blanket's behind you. You have a ball, maybe a block next to you. And with your seat on the bolster this time, well, I guess it was on the bolster before, wasn't it? Yes, okay. Seat on the bolster this time, thinking back to first pose, but here we are, and many in. We're going to put a ball or block, doesn't matter to me, what matters is how it responds to you and your connective tissue. So I put that ball or block, whatever you got, between the knees, and you want to feel like as your arms are open, expansive and out, anything's in your spacious reach, push it away so you feel like, ah, I got the space here, open. Knees go side to side into elevated reclining twist. Okay, so it is an active, dynamic, Part of the sequence. This one is in motion. And if I kind of tune in in some of the experiences of my day where I feel a little uncertainty, it's generally circulating in the core floor or the lower back. You know, it's kind of a, a tenser area when my mind gets a little tense or worried. So try to work a little bit from here the next um, quarter of the session on this zone. We're in zone two. Okay, squeeze the object between the knees. Try to keep some contact with that object. Like it's an important part of your architecture here. Okay? So keep that squeeze in. So if you were to touch the side of the leg, you'll notice, oh, it's, it's energy is moving together. You're trying to move things internally to find some unity. Okay, now, mentally go to the right side. It's all meet on the right, so we're moving our knees to the right. And be there, okay? Feel the body go into a stop, and feel the arm on the left side stand open. And see if your knees can move just a little bit either towards your right arm or away from your right arm downwards. Feel how that responds in your back. We only want good responses, <laughs> okay? So if it's a tough time right now in your back, you're gonna have your knees go closer towards your arm. Or if you're lucky, you might have a block over there and it just kind of landed on the block and I didn't have to put any more energy into it, okay? If you could be gentle with yourself. And you know, with my left leg pushing into the object, relax my grip on the object between the knees. Just relax it, keep it there, but don't squeeze it so much. And then come back and center and go to the left side. Now see if you can push into the object and spend a few moments. I love this block under my knee on the left side. This is quite encouraging for my back to feel like it just kind of gels. It's like a thick brace on my back. And the object between the knees actually helps open up the back, right? So that's pretty obvious, I guess, object, obvious object reason, okay. So if my right leg is, you know, pulling a little bit back, I'm going to try to move it a little farther over to the left to match up the knees. So just try. That helps move my back. Okay. So now those that have a block, you're, you got the object you need. Those that have a ball are going to need to trade out for a block. So I'm going to remove the object. If it's a ball, it goes to the floor. Okay. If it's a block, keep it. Now, when you carefully move back center, 
Lower the left foot to the floor, straighten the leg and bring the block behind the right thigh. And press. Yeah, the nice thing without a belt on this one is I can uh, circle my foot. You know, I have a little bit of freedom with things. It's different. And the block is an actual firm piece that is letting my leg know who's boss, right? Okay, I'm, I'm stretching you. You're not responding back to me. So noticing what's important here. Now I can change the, the block distancing, right? So if I have a really long arm, maybe I can have the block this far, but usually it's the low to the medium setting, right? And I like the flats personally, because it just has more surface material. Let the foot come to a still point. Now, manifest that the right side of your back is lengthening into the back of the thigh and then bend your right knee and try to get the block a little higher up towards the back of the knee, not on the knee itself, like bone-wise, or the ligament pressure. We don't necessarily want to bug those, but feel the the muscle at the back of the right thigh. Feel that respond. Why not? You don't have to, but you'll probably feel something. And then I want you to switch sides. Keep it kind of lackadaisical. You just swap. Swap away. Any leg will do. Hopefully the one that has an L on it. So as I push into the, the leg, I feel the right leg leave leave town, right, it kind of left town a little bit down the mat. And then truly working with that bend of the left knee. Feel where the weight is in your pelvis, if it's all in the left leg right now. And if you feel you're leaving the right leg, then monitor, come back and center with your left thigh. Yeah, you could certainly work a bit with bending the left knee and feeling the sensations move in both legs. Okay, now before we come out of this, take a few moments with the left knee bending. Feel the block closer to the back of the knee. Slide the right foot in. Knee is perked up on the right leg. And then we're going to perk up both feet to sandy feet pose. So if you have a sandbag, you're going to be placing it on the bottom of both feet. So I remove the block. I bring my knees in. Now let's say you don't have a sandbag. You can use a you can use any bag of weight you have, like a bag of rice. Um, Literally, you know, some bags are sold in five pounds. Those are great, five to 10. Or you can put a belt across your feet and pull on that with both hands too, okay? And so as I bring my sand to my feet, I'm gonna do a leg press to come up. Now, some of us tend to push it forward and then swoop it around. Very few of us are gonna let the sand move back because it's a little scary and then push up. but. Feel what it's like to do a leg press or two. Feel the container um, of the muscles in the low back pressure, and then feel when you push up your container of muscles. Now you're in muscle containment, and you're going to work on lengthening them, stretching out your calves, flexing your feet, yeah, feeling where the elbows want to be, maybe open, maybe back. Let the arms start to get interested in enjoying the experience. So if there's a little fear factor with your feet, if they're swaying and your hands are usually holding it from falling on you, you might put your hands on your belly so that you have them for your nervous system to respond with that you might stay with a little bit of trust. A little bit goes a long way someday. So feel like you can trust yourself. Okay. 
arch of the spine. Belly moves with the breath. Now, as you spend a few more moments here so that we can actually monitor enough time for the body to simply reverse the direction in which gravity flows through the organs, right? It's kind of the opposite of gravity's constant pull during the day of standing or sitting on our organs. So it's actually soothing and calming and allows them to reverse the actual flow of what is moving in and out, right? even just basic fluids. So feeling the muscular kind of binds that you have to maintain to, to experience this um, inversion. There's muscular binding that has to happen in your leg so you can be upside down. It's not all fun and games, okay. But you might feel if you bend to your knees, and even if you don't, you still are gonna feel, I have a feeling. So feel a little bend of the knees and noticing what influence it is in your back, any corners of your back. So try to let those lengthen out. So the next few moments, we're going to keep stretching the low back, Kind of a low back flap. And now as you bend through your knees, try to keep that softening of the lower back. Okay? We're going to massage through our back corridor. So you can either drop the sand overhead, much out for the hands, your hands, anybody's hands. Okay? Or slide it off to the sides. And then as we Push our bolster forward. I want you to take a pause here and putting your feet on top of the bolster. Notice if you can still touch the bolster a little bit with your fingers so it's not too distant. And you're going to push down to your feet. Feel the arch in the spine immediately, right? There's an immediate arch in the back. Now, if I put my hands on my thigh lids, the top of my thighs, I'm going to actually push with my hands, but actually slide the thigh circulation towards the knee. So that part of the muscle, the connective tissue over that fascia is pretty slippery, especially when you really make contact with it with your hands, right? So the heel of the hand pushes into the quad. So as you start to lift up your buttocks from the floor, trying to work with movement towards your upper back. So I want you to lift up your hips, but let the circulation flow up your back, up your back, towards the shoulders. Stretch your arms overhead. Okay. Keep with the energy of fluidity. And then slowly lower the spine. And as the spine moves down, even though the massage effect is very simple, notice in the, your peripheral vision if your knees are moving out. Okay. So you can do a couple things for containment there. You can put a ball or block between the knees and you can also belt the thighs. Okay. So since it's the knees that move out, generally if I put a ball or block between them, then I'm going to try to push in just the right amount. Okay, if I have a belt, you could still be moving the knees out unless you belt really close to the knees. So there's an argument for both. The nice thing about the belt though is that you're pushing the energy outwards for resistance, and this is pushing the energy inward. So I think in a, a well-balanced yoga practice, you want a little bit of both of those, you know, inwards and outwards with your body mechanics. So I'm gonna go with the ball right now, but you could use either, okay? So I'm gonna lift and lower the spine. So I want you to continue that for a few moments. Now arms could go back over 
and feel the actual selection of reaction in your hands and you letting them be kind of like two blobs at the bottom of your arm kind of there. Or are you going to stand the fingers open? Make it the eyelid. There's nothing wrong with being a hand blob, right? There's nothing wrong. It might be useful. So as you lower the spine down, feel the tissues gradually lengthen in the back. You've got to work pretty hard to get your back sometimes to, to receive all this circulation. So take about two more. And anyone that wants to hold a full bridge pose with definition, anytime coming up here, you're welcome to keep your hands down, lift the hips up, interlace your fingers, roll the shoulders down and then in, and then just stay with that. That's a good one too. A good bridge pose. We can all work with good bridge poses. So with a few moments ahead, whether you're in motion or stillness, feel the intensity in the thighs, and then let the hands relax the clasp, let the spine lower down for all of us, and let's meet in Supta Baddha Konasana. So that is a reclining bound angle. So my feet are together, my knees are out, and I certainly will use blocks. Um, it's restorative, so we want to use something that's restoring that interior, anterior part of the sacral um, ligament, so the front inner line here. So I don't want to overstress that ligament. So I'm going to tuck my blocks in pretty close to my hips, so that it feels like a real basin at my feet to kind of lack of circulation in the fluids in my legs. Disperse. Let your arms reach around to get a hold of your belt. And we're going to bring our arms to hold the belt wide. Yeah, any, any old way is good. You don't have to spend a lot of energy making your belt perfect. We all do that, right? So just grab your belt and reach over. If the blocks are feeling like torture on your hip, Sometimes a very intense press in there. You can tilt the blocks or put them out distant under your knees. And that might feel interesting to have an even pressure under each side and notice the tissues response on the right and the left. It's likely different in the middle parts. Now, before exiting this pose, let's spend a few more moments with it. So, moving the block of the belt, sorry, and if you have your sandbag, place it across the ribs. Bring it high up, right where the ribs intersect. And if the blocks are holding your legs up, I'm assuming they are, you could tilt the blocks up so they're not a harsh pressure on your thigh. But tilt it, right? So I've got my block so it's tipped in, it's tilted versus flat, pointy. It curves in. And that could be useful to the knees. Let the arms relax besides you so the legs can have all the energy to support your back. They walk you around. They are priority right now for this next little set. So we're going to segue into working through the, the legs and the glutes or the buttock muscles. Now feel your feet rest against each other. I let the energy in the legs basically flow. So nothing is critically um, pressurizing, but there is pressure that builds 
dependent on the shapes that we choose in the practice. So simply kind of let this pose go from its kind of simmer mode. It's kind of in that simmer. The legs are in a little bit of a simmer. They can kind of feel a little bit of heat, and it's, it's on both sides. So what I'm going to ask you to do is when you move your blocks aside, keep them nearby for use. I'm going to keep mine on a low, low height. You can use either. And we'll bring the knees up and forward in towards the chest to manage the back for length. Then you're going to simply bring your left foot to the bolster and cross the right leg over the left leg and let the knee swerve to the right. Counter twist. Give it a few moments. This is a counter twist, so not a long pose. Now, the sand might be useful for you to keep. I'm going to push my sand on my left side of my rib cage, but it's still across my body. It might feel like it's grounding. You can take off the sand. You don't have to wear sand all the time. One less prop to put on, get a sand jacket. But then you want one that fits on your hips too, so that will work. Okay, now when you come back center, right foot to left knee, sand aside. You cannot see this as being helpful with sand. Hold the back of the left thigh and squeeze the leg in. Get that feel of the right hip. The left leg can be limp. It doesn't have to be kicking up and always responsive. And it could kick up and still be pretty comfortable. So monitor. Feel across the right glute, the right bum Okay, now those of you that have a massage ball, grippy ball, you're going to be putting your left foot on the bolster and then placing that ball under the right buttock and massaging into that buttock. So you're kind of moving your right knee with the movement of the body weight, remember you need body weight, which is going to happen because you have a body, um, but you need actually let the body weight push into the ball, smush the ball, a little side to side. If you don't have a ball, you can actually use a tennis ball on this one. This one would be quite a deep pose, right, if you used a ball that was really intense and much much harder, but the, the squishy one is good too. So if you have one, really massage into that right glute. So you're right at the, the medial part of the buttock, where it feels like it's almost right up at the ridge of the, the pelvic bone. Okay. The back of the hip. All right, now when I move to the second side, I want you to notice that this right side that you are massaging a bit, this lateral, almost lateral zone, we're going to go to the lateral um, uh, rotator. So when I uncross right foot, uh, I can feel that pressure in the glute. I'm going to bring the left leg over the right leg. Yikes. Take the ball away, lower my pelvis all the way down, and then bring the knees over to the left. Okay, so this area that you were just massaging in probably feels that a little bit. Arms can go wide, they can go back. You could play on the ribs. You could do a couple things. You could put your sand back on, on the ribs, not on the hip. We'll get the sand on the hip next, next phase. Coming up very soon, the same episode. So the knees are left, and you'll feel the coordination in the waist. Not sand dependent. And if you do have it, it's just a bonus for some of this. But the block on that left side might be helpful. Right, you're not going to be in this shape for a critical amount of time. I want you to just kind of get a whiff of the stretch on the side of the right leg. 
And now where the thigh is moving is simple. I'm gonna move my knees in center, my left foot to the right knee. And now as I move my stand aside, I hold the back of the right leg. Now, if you're a real massage enthusiast and you want the ball to be there now, right? Under your left foot, you could add it anytime, anytime. It's anytime you're good. Okay. Now my right foot, I like to get kind of my basics around the sensation first. And then I'm gonna add on that ball to my left glute. So I've got a cushion in my foot personally to get the hips to lift, to get the ball there. And you don't have to have your leg crossed over. This doesn't have to be the leg shape. Right? You could put your foot on a bolster, have both feet on the bolster and massage along the left buttock. Okay? You're going to maybe go to the lateral rotator, so that's the side of the leg, the side of the hip, at the top of the outer left thigh. That's usually a kind of a sweet spot to maneuver and massage into. If you're going to have this object, you won't be able to get a massage out of it, right? So you've got to have something. If the block is not the best thing to try to squish around. So it's going to be some, some round object. Okay. And any squishy ball will work. You could find all manners of them that that'll work out. It could be a ball that's a little bigger than this one as well, or small. So as you move a little side to side, you've got the left hip identified now, the left thumb. Okay, get ready for some wild and crazy hip things here. All right, so I've got my bolster under my feet, for me both feet, for you it might be one. Okay, so see if you can take one final kind of pressure into this ball, and then let the seat lower down and move the ball and Kick the bolster to the right, and let's bring our right leg down and cross the left leg over to the bolster. Got to keep your attention here, so you gotta keep it in motion. So I like a blanket on top of my bolster, on that right over on that side. So I'm gonna kind of slap that blanket on it. It gives me just enough height, and then I can add the sand to my left exterior thigh. I'll take my time getting my sand in there. And try to layer your sand so you feel the weight in proportion to create traction. So let's say you don't feel it right on your hip like the sandbag, it's not actually on your visceral hip. But you feel like this area is kind of has some space. That's where you're, what you're aiming for. The ball is the sacrum or block. Block looks fine on this one. The right leg is in a mild bend. It could bend more, right? You could really bend that right knee and get a little bit of a front thigh stretch. Just be cautious that you're not trying to do too much. I don't know if that's something to be cautious about, but it's a lot. Turn your head to the left. Left arm is open, eyes closed. Don't peek. Okay, feel where the energy is across the body. And feel where it moves into the body. Trying to get surface space supported. Now, if it feels pretty good, like it's not a harsh stretch, it's not causing you to wince, that's okay. It doesn't need to be, oh, so much um, intensity, I must be doing something. Maybe you pass the time and you know that some, you're bearing witness to some opening. And so when I switch the sides around, I'm going to be a little 
slow. I'm going to take the ball out. I'm going to pull my um, sand towards me so my leg might move too. And then when I come back in the center, I can either hold the knees and circle the knees to massage the outer rim of the sacrum. I can put a sandbag on the shins. This is only if your knee is going to be okay with this. So if you have a knee in question, simply put the sand on the floor beside you and hold the back of the legs or below the knees or on the kneecaps and circle. Go both directions several times. And then get the bolster to the other side. If it's a little stressed to use your arms and take it overhead, just kind of push it near your rear and kick it on over to the left. It'll make its way over there. Yeah, doesn't need to be. In fact, the least strain you could do, the better. Okay? So left leg down, right leg crosses. And then I tuck in my massage ball to my sacrum. And then I add my sand when I when I want it. So right now, you know, you might feel some clutter in your back. You've got to manage your clutter a little bit. So the body's got it too. So kind of feel before you get that sand smushed on your leg, where you could be connecting your hip to your knee across to the bolster. Even if you take up some of the pose time to direct the circulation inside. You don't know maybe what is inside of you to release and so you can kind of get the angles and the alignment, um, manage the pose, and then maybe you can feel some things move out and release. So my left leg, I really like bending the knee and holding the foot with the right hand the left foot is, I think it kind of sparks up a lot of interesting left quads sensation. But I, I like the idea of letting my arms be expansive. You can even hold the belt overhead, you know, activate all the parts of your back, partially releasing, partially um, expanding, opening, circulating. Brain rolls to the right. We get a good feel here for the left shoulder open. The right arm open. Yeah, if your back feels in the right behind the heart that it's still a little snagged, there's some snarly spaces there. You might want to do some, you know, opening and closing along with the arms. And like a snow angel, kind of move the arms a little bit and feel where in your back you can motion and loosen. And let your breath out. Let it go. You can kind of hold it in, but I can't hear you. You can be vocal. It's okay. You could use it. And when you feel that back kind of being moved along, I like the ball or anything at the sacrum because it feels like a it's a very safe amount of touch in my back that moves it to feel just a, enough safe space in that zone. And the nice thing about here is we got the ribs moving open too. It's not like we're rounding our back and, and causing poor spine direction, not slouching. It's not a slouching position. So when we come around here to get up to all fours, then we have a little bit of work to do, right, with our back management. So when you are ready to move the ball or block, whatever's at your sacrum, move that, that object away. We're gonna start to maneuver our way around, and I want you to take your time to get up to all fours. So we're going to 
lightly take our sand aside. I like to sometimes come up through boat pose, kind of roll up and feel my feet forward and fling up. And sometimes I like to roll to the side. So because of what we were just doing, I'm going to opt for knees in. So I balance out my back now. And it would just swap over to one side. Yep. And then as I hold the back of the legs, I can either roll up and maybe spend a moment here kind of huddling into your legs. Kind of hugging in. Hugging the legs to the back. Okay, feel the back muscles move to the thigh muscles. Your knees can be out, your knees could be together. Okay, feel this awareness in our back alignment. Okay, interlace your fingers. Try to push your palms forward so you don't have any props here. It's just you. Just your, you and your legs and your heart centered. Try to round your backs so like you're in a cat back. Okay. Now the feet push. Now when I bring my hands down the sides of my hips, I'm gonna pull in my blanket. I'm gonna sneak it in. Okay. When I come back to sit on it, I'm gonna put my bolster to the front all the way up, and then swing my feet to the back and come up to table. But this table pose will be a reaching table. It's kind of a broken leg table here. Okay. So stand your arms forwards and feel the kind of the slack in your back. So the hands are as wide as my bolster, pretty far out. We'll call this far out asana. Okay. Feel the back, kind of the cape of your back, and lower your head. Feel the arms, but also try to get your seat to reach back. Okay, so here's what we're at. We're going to be this direction for some of us, and some of us might stay here and put a block under our head. So we're at the hairline with the block edge, and we stay here. Okay, hands down. Now, some of us are going to slide the hands to the floor, lift up our head, and then push back to dog pose. And our head's not on anything in this dog pose. Okay. So when we reach our hips back to the space behind us, try to feel that kind of fervor in the calves. It's like they're trying to figure out should they widen or lengthen. So for all of us intended here, let's come down and or come up to table pose. So if you're down, you're going to come up, hands, knees, toes relaxed. Round your back into cat. Feel the chin to your chest. Inhale. Glide the ribs forward into cow. Exhale, round your back. Yeah, imagine if there is a, a little bit more of a balance ability to have a sandbag on your back. And we're not going to put the sand on the back to flow off of our tail. But I want you to be able to move as if you had a weight on your back. And you want to like keep that slinky motion, lengthening and strengthening your back. The idea with that is that you go slower. Okay, so last time, and this time we're going to move to up dog. So you might remove your block. I'm going to push my bolster length, but I just like up dog with the bolster. I think it feels quite helpful for my hips. You can try it without, and you can try it with. It's worth your time to try both. So as you lift up the heart, feel that deeper, lower back awareness and then lower down your belly try to feel the slow low and the elbows by your sides okay feel where the feet go rather close and feel when the feet are rather far out so kind of notice the difference in your back so 
Let's put our elbows on the floor so that we can feel the difference of the legs without a contest of um, lower back tension. So if I separate my knees, I usually notice my knee movement. So it's like my knee bones, I can, I can feel where those are. So I can move from my buttock muscles to bring my knees closer and move them farther out. So try to bring a blend moving your elbows down and find stillness and feel the ribs forwards and the elbows down. Okay, knees can be apart or together at this moment. So you be the decider. If it doesn't make a really big difference in your sensations, right? See if you can let the legs have some separation. And now slide the hands back so they're closer under your shoulders. Crown the head forwards, and then toes under. Okay, now as I slide my hands there as far back as I can go with my palms down. No palms about it, but palms about it. Okay. Or qualms. Palms or qualms. Okay. Now, my elbows, if I grip them into my side, that's good, right? But I'm going to try to move my elbows back and my shoulders back. So when you come up, bring the elbows in as close as they'll go. And then when you come up, you'll feel the elbows kind of wing out. So I'm going to come up, dog. Toes under or toes flat. You choose for the difference. They are different. And when I come back to table, there's like this automatic kind of knee pull in that we do. Okay, so Feel just the bare minimum that you move your knees in. And then I want you to bring your left leg to stretch back up in the air, okay? And when that leg is up in the air, feel the hands and place them under you so that they are supporting your upper back and arms, okay? Feel if that left leg is going to move so that your back is at a flat space, a little flatter. So that means the left foot lowers down. And you try to even the hips up a bit. You kind of can look back at your legs and notice you know, you're, pretty, you're pretty connected here. The hips are leveling. But keep it simple here. Okay. So right arm stretches forwards. Left leg is still up in the air behind you. Certainly a balancing, strengthening position. Now the right hand down. And then bring the left knee in. Come back to child's pose. Lower your forehead. Simply center. And I'll come up table. So I'm going to have my knees this time a little closer. So they're as close as I can get the legs. Bring the right leg back and just kind of feel the differences here. Feel the difference in the hips. Okay, feel the difference when that arm reaches forward, that left arm reaches forward. So if you start with the legs close, does it make a difference in your back muscles? Breathing. Okay, now when you center and from this reach, I want you to lower down that left hand, the right knee, and take each side one more time. Left leg goes back, right arm goes forward, just for a second. Left arm forward, right leg back. Let's meet with the right foot stepping to the top right corner of your mat and your left thigh stretching down to the bolster. We're not going to spend a lot of time in this shape though. We're going to turn the bolster so it's horizontal on your mat across. Okay? And scoot the right foot into parallel so the foot is facing straight forward. We've got to get some blocks here. 
So I want you to get both of your blocks. So they're in the front under your hands with your right foot between them. And we're gonna lift up the back knee and stretch the left back heel towards the floor and try to lengthen that front thigh. Actually, the thigh that needs the energy to work is a lot, a lot into that back leg. So feel the feet in two different tracks. They're both aiming to lengthen, not to say straight legs, but elongate the trunk, okay? Take up a habit here for a moment where you have your blocks as high as they need to be under your hands. Give yourself as plenty of height, okay? Now, feeling what you might use to actually get away from using the blocks right now. Not meaning that you go lower with your hands, but that you have a little inquiry into your torso to stay elevated versus slumping, which would be here. So I want you to work your way to bend your right knee. This is important. I bend the right knee. I try to keep the back foot down. So if I'm going to come up, I'm going to pivot my back foot out. And I'm going to keep the right knee above the ankle and certainly work my way up. So up into a lunge elevation. And that's it. We're not going to give it a name. We're going to call it lunge elevation. So my arms are up. You can see at least that part. The movement of the ribs lifting. Okay. Now keep the arms opening out. Span the ribs. And as I lower the hands, reach your palms down. Don't give up quite yet on this one, though. Keep the left heel, as if it means you're giving up, but keep the back heel pressing down. And this time when you come up, bring your hands actually to your hips and try to reach your ribs forwards as you press the weight back into your, onto your back leg. How about that? And feel the right knee bending. Yeah, small dose of time on this one. Open the ribs. And you can bring your hands together behind your back and stretch your arms back over the chest. Or maybe if your hands on your ribs or your arms open. Okay, good. So feel the knee in that lunge. And then lean into that hands down on blocks. Switch that back heel up. And step forward. Feet. Hips distance apart. Lower your ribs. Hold onto your elbows. Forward fold. Uttanasana. Okay. So feel where the balance is in your spine between the shoulder blades. Down to the brain stem. Let your head nod. Where does the nodding come from, right? Is it the throat? Is it the neck that creates that movement? Or is it something completely unidentified in you? So I would let gravity have you here. Just let the weight of the brain stretch the neck and the spine. Actually, it stretches your hamstrings too, doesn't it? That supported weight. Big breath, arms dangle. Now hands on blocks, feet together. Yeah, and it's a practice of a little curiosity here. So when I step the right foot back, I'm gonna to try to work with my balance, especially when you come into a standing pose from a forward bend, it's a little, you know, a, you actually have an opportunity to manifest that balancing work that you're coordinating. So I, I like that direction a little better, but it's good to try both anyway. So my legs are elongating, my back heel stretching down. But there's a little buoyancy that comes from that, right? From kind of springing back from your forward perch. This is going from the weight of the hips forwards. It's like it's a little different. So maybe for you, maybe not. But when the back leg is kind of trying to convince me it needs to turn out on its own, 
I'm going to try to bring it back to what I started with, because both feet parallel. Reminding my Achilles tendon back there to reach sharply down the back of the leg towards the heel. It doesn't fit anywhere else in my body, so I might as well work with it where it's at. Okay, now bending the left knee, pivot the back foot so you can open up the hip, right? The back hip kind of, it kind of turns and pops open. Yeah, it's a, it's a hip pop. Okay, so that hip kind of pops open and I feel the left knee lunge and I want to be certain when I come up that I'm not going to slide out. So if I push down to my left foot and then I feel the knee above, I'm really interested in my reaching potential with my ribs, right? So get a feel for your lift of your core. Yeah, and opening the arms maybe. And then part of this, this actual phase of movement today is feeling from down to up. So give a moment, you're gonna lean back down you're going to feel the reach of that left knee towards the toes. And you're going to try to move up again, but with your hands on your hips and then to move your ribs up. So feel this quarter of the rib cage. Feel the belly button move back so that you establish like that the hips are broad and they're balancing and they're as essential as your, your feet, right, to hold you up, the pelvis. And if you didn't have that mid space, it would be a completely not an option to get upright. But when you feel your left knee moving forward, span your arms, maybe interlace your fingers, stretch the ribs, the chest, the spine, arch. Keep it going, see if that spine support. Okay, now as we open out arms. And you might go energy up and then come forward. We're going to center the back heel, turn it so it's up, and slide the right knee back. And I want us to walk the left foot over to the right, toe heel, toe heel, and actually come into a seated position. So you're going to move your left knee out and then coming into sit on your bolster, cross legged position. Okay, I'm going to pivot a little towards you. Okay, so what I want you to have is your blocks at the front, a sandbag on your, let's start right by sand. Okay, so we've got sand at this, this, uh, this kind of final phase, so we kind of move from a lot of back work, reclining, spinals, and then when we go from the top, now we come back into the middle. So I've got the right hip, basically starting to heat up with the sandbag. So reach your hands onto the blocks high up. Yeah, even if you're one that reaches the floor easy here, your knees easy. Try to use the span of the blocks. How far out could you move your blocks and still be able to sit upright? So feel where the blocks could go. Yeah, I would span them out a little bit so that your midsection feels a little dimension. Okay, now I feel my left, my legs needing a little bit of support. So if you have an extra blanket or a ball, you can put one under any knee that is a little bit spazzed out. So if you've got a knee that's you can tuck a blanket, a uh, little pillow. Homes are great places to practice because you've probably got a bunch of stuff around you you can use. Okay. And as the blocks go forwards, I try to move them as far front, door one. Okay. Door two, go left. My right hip is stretching, so I go left with my blocks to enable that support in my hip. And feel that right thigh opening. Breathe. 
Maybe your head surrenders. Now move the block so they're all in the front yard. Okay, and let's take one of those blocks so it's just off to the, could be either side, right or left side, but it's going to be something that you could reach to put back behind you. So I'm going to remove any object under my left knee and I'm going to place the sand so it's across the top of the left thigh now. I scoot my right foot in closer to the bolster so my knee is lower. And then as I cross the right leg over the left, I'm going to start twist to the right. So I'm still working with my right thigh, hip, balance. So this is more inner balance than actually balancing on your legs, right? But notice as you move your block behind you, you can reach your left elbow to the outside of the right leg and use that to prop yourself up, start to use parts of your body to prop your rib cage up. It's almost as if you got these hooks, right? The, the thicker ribs, and you're trying to pull them up and then turn right. Yeah, so my right hand is to the back of the block, and the left arm is straight ish, bringing out the tension. Yeah, you can wring out a little bit of it right now. Breathing. And okay, move the block from behind you forward as you come out of this direction with the arms. And see if you can still hold on to that right knee and sit up tall. Maybe you pull your ribs closer to the right. You're up tall. Okay, now as we start to shed this side, I want us to come into a wide stance, wide extension out with the legs. So let's take the legs into Uddhavista Kanasana. And I want you to try to feel the legs extend out. So push out into the feet and taking your blocks so they're forward, high up and try to reach, reach out through your feet. Okay. This is really step one, Upa Vista today. So feel the arch in the lower back, and I want you to purposely let your spine move into a cat shape. So round your back. Okay, now as you bring your hands to your legs, push down to come up. And then change the right leg crossed in. If you put an object under the knee, this is at the time. Left leg crosses in front of the right shin. And then we've got sand on the left side. Okay. So keep it pure and simple. If you lean forward on the blocks, you're going to be starting to kind of feel the fluidic nature of how you segue into the pose. Right. So feeling the Space is opening up on that hip. It's an interesting version, right, for hip work because we're kind of squishing the actual connective tissue in our hip. We're kind of trying to squish things around so that we feel things um, kind of, kind of the awareness kind of spurts into like my hip here. So um, let it also segue in stretching the inner thigh tissue. So feeling that it flows, it's like the inner awareness flows. It's helpful. So blocks can go to the right side and they can also stay forward. You don't have to make it exacto here. So if you want to go to reach up to your left arm, you want to reach your blocks a little lower to the right side to about two o'clock on the right side. Yeah, and the reason the sand is on the left hip is because we're trying to give traction and ground to that hip. 
and the things you do to feel more, but usually feeling our personal inner environment more, right, can be useful meditation. For grounding, for centering. And then we put our blocks back forwards. And now as I come back up, I'm going to move a block to the left and then place my sand after I remove the object under my knee and leg on my right thigh. Okay, so feel when that left leg crosses over. Okay, feel when the knee is up and down. There's no feeling in your hip like it's it's kind of generic. I feel my leg is lifting and lengthening. It warms up the connective tissue. Um, but the stretch between the muscles is kind of basic. It just feels like it's it's a reach. So use the elbow on the exterior left leg to kind of pin and turn. Really pin that leg with the right arm and twist. Breathing. Press. Now you might start to turn more in the thicker ribs and the thinner ones, right? Higher up may stay back, actually stay forward of you versus moving behind you. So take a bigger breath, like let the breath really be where it is felt internally in the spaces between your ribs. So kind of bring that to life in your position. After all this time you practice today, right? See if you can bring your position into alignment. Try to refine that with the heart. Feel the belly move, bringing out the torso. Acceptance is, is really everything, right? In this position. If you come out, you come out anytime. Okay, now if my left knee is kind of flapped open, I'm going to try to use my right arm to press it towards the right with the left leg actually. The things we do for, for circulation, huh? I can feel the dynamic from my thigh into my hip and then up to the waist. Kind of feel that dynamic nature of rotation. And then as I move my block over, I'm going to uncross. And this time, I want you to kind of establish your, your final roots here. So what we'll do is we'll slide our seat off the bolster. And you're going to push your bolster forwards. But take a seat on one blanket, OK? And then take your feet out wide to Upavista. I like the blocks under the knees. I've been playing with this pose with my belt around my feet. So I buckle up and I have my belt around the feet so I really have to push my feet out. So that could be useful. But I'll demo the generic one first. So generic one is lean forward, is lean into it. <laughs> kind of a, a light message right now. Lean into it, see what happens. So lean forward. Let your brain center between your arms. Reach up through your back. Okay, now if your feet get a little floppy and you're good with that, you can stay with that. That's fine. Okay. If you're going to use uh, kind of a little bit of a, a mastery finality, it might feel interesting in your back to go from this into our final pose. So I'm going to take a pretty wide loop, which is, I thought it was going to be wider for my feet, but no, no serene. Okay, that's pretty, pretty tight. Now I'm going to take the blocks out. There we go. That's good. And then my bolster is up. So I'm actually pushing out with my feet. Now my belt needs to be, so it's really going to be hooked around towards my Heels. It takes you a while. It takes a little flexibility. Get the belt to that place. So if that isn't working for you right now, you just kind of stretch over. 
pass on it, you know? There's more to come. And then if my belt is near my heel, it's right around the top of my ankle, right? The belt is strapped all the way around to the top of the ankle and the heel around. Yeah, it looks kind of interesting. And then you're going to lean forward. Yeah. You might get the belt, right? I kind of don't think you're going to necessarily pull the belt up with your, your teeth, but you might get your head down a little farther. So feel that reach with the arms. Try to keep the top of the thigh lifting, draw the kneecaps up towards the hips. Secure your hips. Let the spine move front and lengthen. Look at that. Whoa, big stretch. You know, depending on your pose and your purpose, we're going to come up with purpose, and then we'll put our bolster on a couple blocks. So remove the belt, shake out the legs, or squish them with the bolster one or the other. This is kind of nice, just the bolster on my legs like that too. That's a good Upa Vista, right? When you have the bolster across, because it's like sandbags, right, with your arms. This would be one that you could, um, you could read, right? We can do that if you want to multitask. Okay. All right. So I had another option today at the end. So you've got bolster bench, legs up over the bolster, okay? Or you've got legs up the wall. So choose what you like. If you want to put your legs on the bolster and sweep your spine back and head on blanket, perfect. If you're going to go legs up the wall, you're going to put a bolster or a couple blankets at the base of the wall. You can even do legs up the wall without any prop under your hips today, okay? The blanket under your head is, I think, really nice to have. I like that support of a blanket under my head. And then as I lift up my legs, I'm going to have my stand nearby, okay? So you to be the decider. You want to go full blanket, okay? So, Lean into that idea, whichever hip left or right, you're going to choose one hip up. And then roll so that the shoulder actually rolls, so you're rolling across the back of the pelvis and then letting the legs get close as they can get. Yeah, the reason we're using this bolster idea is to open the belly, the ribs, the respiratory, and bring some energy into the heart. Stand on feet. If you're in bolster bench with your legs up on the bolster, you can put sand across your ribs, okay, or your shins, so that matter. And then with the elevation of the feet, feel your arms open. Take time to energetically feel when the hands are holding the elbows or the arms are out in cactus or the hands are upon the belly. We have our legs energetically up. And this time they're supported, right? They have a wall or a bolster supporting them. And you don't have to have sand on your feet when your feet are at the wall. So if you want to move the sand off and let the legs be up the wall, and contain them, you can always strap the legs so they don't slide out. Okay, energetically manage the motion of belly, lifting and lowering with the breath. Let your muscles have a memory of breathing this way. Inhale, belly. Exhale, belly relaxes towards the spine. Now feel where your tailbone centers down, however the pose is, from your perspective. 
Now, if you're at the wall, you can actually probably feel part of your legs touching the wall. If you have your seat close to the wall, notice your seat and the upper back of the legs to the wall. Try to get them there. If they don't get to the wall with your sand, you might remove the sand and really try to get your legs closer. Notice your alignment. This is so similar to standing um, alignment in legs. Try to lengthen the legs. Let's all meet in body parasana. So if you're on bolster, you're gonna with your feet on, you're gonna move your knees out, your feet together. If you're at the wall, feet together, knees out, sand off. And then hands on the legs if you're at the wall, pressing the legs to the wall. But really invite the awareness through the spine and supporting the pelvic floor. Try to go through the lanes of travel, of muscles. And then finally coming to a few moments of practice when you're really close. Maybe knees to chest, hug them in. <clears throat> Maybe you roll to one side and you be there for a few moments. Either one, but comfortable. So take a moment to roll to the side and come up and pause when you start to rise up to sit. So kind of moment of pausing and sensing your back up from your pelvis and your hips down from your ribs and feel all the energy that's in center of that. Maybe someone's bottled up. Notice where you feel your energy center in the body. It could be the digestive tract as an energy center. It could sometimes be up higher. And let's meet at hands to unity and brain bowing into the heart space. So if you can select some moments here of uniting awareness, maybe it starts just simply in you. And how can you not help but you know, feel the awareness of others in this practice space, but even outwards, kind of the energies in communities here and out. So breathe in to breathe in wellness, balance, surrendering the brain down to the heart. Inhale together. And exhale, exhale. Bowing into your heart. In gratitude, Namaste. Thank you. All right.